Uh, so thank you for sticking around. Uh, now, please join me in giving another round of applause for Director Megumi Sasaki. So, thank you again for coming and sharing your film with us. I think it's a really a brave project. Thank you so much. Um, before we start, can we can I introduce my crew here? Uh, of course. First, go ahead. Uh, Bernardine College. Hey, <laughs> editor, and she's been working this the third film, Partner in Crime, and Peter Barbara, sound editor. You want to stand up? Thank you. Also, we've been working together since Herb and Dorothy. And uh, Noriko, assistant editor, you want to stand up? <laughs> assistant editor and graphics, she did a good job. And Keith Shapiro, online producer. <laughs> Anyone I'm not aware of? Anybody's here? That's it? OK. And also, uh, we have a special guest, actually, um, the protagonist of my last film, Urban Dorothy's. Dorothy is here, so can I introduce her? Dorothy? <laughs> Dorothy? Where are you? Do you want to wave your hand? Do you want to stand up? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Oh, it's, it's good to have so many special guests here tonight. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> Uh, well, I know you've been working on this project for mm -hmm. a number of years. Maybe you could begin by just talking about how you began the project sure. and uh, when you knew that it could become a feature-length documentary. Sure. Um, I started filming this since 2010, immediately after the Cove won the Academy Award. And um, it was a lot of... Um, sort of anger and confusion in Japan upon its um, screening in Tokyo, I mean in Japan, in the same year, in the summer. And um, there's so much uh, criticism and anger towards the movie, but we didn't hear anything about that back in the US. So um, I was really shocked when I first saw the uh, movie The Cove for two reasons. One, it was just so um, so one-sided, first of all, and with a full of uh, sort of prejudice, I think, based on um, lack of information and um, knowledge, and um, also pointing a camera towards the fisherman. I think something was very wrong with that, because the camera and documentary and film is a very powerful form you know, to uh, bring the bat under the spotlight. But fishermen, these, these guys are very, uh, you know, these are just the normal people. We, they have no means, you know, to express themselves. And um, now under attack of like international criticism called like monsters and killers. And I thought something was very wrong here. And that's one thing. And secondly, I didn't, yeah, like, like I said, I didn't hear any like, response or criticism from Japan at all. And why nobody says anything about this? So uh, at least I wanted to give some information and show the both sides of the argument and um, also give a voice to the fishermen. Yep. Yeah, and I think you really uh, communicate that double-edged sword of documentary representation when you show Rick O'Berry talk about how he was hurt when uh, he was arrested and uh, you know, thought that it was kind of a setup situation uh, with uh, cameras and uh, photographers uh, there. So I think you show that dynamic uh, quite well. Um, but uh, in, at the same time that you're kind of providing a corrective um, to uh, the 2009 film, The Cove, uh, you also seem to be interested in an international audience, both in Japan and in the U.S. Uh, maybe you could you know, talk about 
you know, the difficulties in keeping both sides and having this argument kind of develop in the film. I think that was the most challenging part of uh, making this film because we don't, I really wanted to show this movie to the both sides of the argument. So um, at the end, I, I just sort of disappeared. I mean, I, I just presented the material, so I really wanted to leave the decision to the audience instead of like imposing my own idea or emotions. And because a lot of documentaries these days are very um, expressive of uh, filmmakers' opinions, which is fine, but um, for this film, I really wanted to avoid that intentionally. Mm. And uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, Jay Alabaster's uh, participation and uh, how his research informed your own ideas about the project? Sure. Um, meeting Jay was uh, one of the best surprises in this movie. And he's very smart and very careful. So he didn't say yes right away. So I was very careful to sort of convince him to be in the part of this movie. And luckily he did. And also he happens to be in the footage of 2010, you know, the dialogue event. It was just a matter of luck. And I was very, very happy to find him because we didn't, we didn't know at all. So it was almost like a destiny that he has to be in this movie. And he is in a way, he, it, you know, in the opposite, um, position from me because he's American and living in uh, Japan for a long time and I'm Japanese and living in the States for a long time so we sort of share the same opinion and thoughts about this issue so it was great and then he really represented sort of my voice and in the movie so I believe it worked quite well I hope mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think so um, and I think from uh, talking with you, uh, you know, prior to this uh, about the film and uh, the ideas that you begin to bring up uh, in the project, you're kind of interested in these systemic issues that uh, you know are going on, you know, beneath uh, people's feelings and you know preconceptions about whaling. Um, could you talk a little bit about uh, your comments on globalization and globalism versus localism? Because I think you bring up some really smart points about that. Um, when I first started this movie, I thought I would just give show the other side of this issue. But as I went on and kept filming, and five years and six years passed, and then and then I realized that this, what's happening in Taiji represents much bigger than whaling, the issue of whale, whaling and dolphin uh, slaughter or dolphin hunting for the aquariums. It's, uh, it's about the division and what's going on in the world right now. It's between the locals, uh, globalization, globalism versus localism. What they're doing in Taiji is just, uh, you know, they've been doing it for like centuries and that's their local tradition and identity and culture, but it doesn't fit today's global standards. So there's a clash, you know, in, in two. And similar things I think is happening all around the world and major, you know, um, example is what happened in uh, UK last year, you know, Brexit. Um, like local people were very upset and their livelihood was hurt by the globalization, but their voice was never been heard, but they're, you know, very angry. And so I think that was a sort of like expression of their anger and frustration about their life is being under threat by the globalization. And also like Donald Trump being elected here. It's also <laughs> a global voice being neglected for a long time. So um, a lot of things can go parallel, you know, with the, what's happening in Taiji, I guess. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a smart uh, comment and way to, you know, link this film to broader dynamics. And I think what you exercise in the film is, you know, how in these conflicts between globalism and localism, people's feelings uh, get uh, hurt very easily. And people's, you know, uh, 
you know, preconceived notions of different cultures uh, can be whipped up into a frenzy and you know, cause violence in, in many ways, like we see with Brexit and, and in the US. Um, but I think what you exercise uh, in this film is you know, a sense of compassion and you know, cultural understanding. And we even see that pop up um, between the Sea Shepherds and uh, I'm forgetting the man with the loudspeaker, where they seem to be kind of friends and colleagues, Actually, even yeah. though they're on the opposite sides. So it's interesting to see that, that kind of compassion, you know, almost pop up just because humans are together. Yeah, exactly. And if you know someone in person, you cannot hate so much. And uh, that was like a good example. And Nakahira, the nationalist, um, is, um, is a good example. And he's a kind of like surprising peacemaker. I never thought he would be the only one. He was actually the only one who's trying to communicate with the other side of the camp. And with that, you know, with his broken English. And then he also hold, you know, held the, um, one, one, you know, this dialogue event that was the first and last event ever happened in Taiji. So he should get a huge credit for that. So you never know who has this brilliant idea. So it's very important to sort of listen to everybody, I guess. And speaking of you know, globalism, um, you know, before I open up uh, questions to the audience, I want to ask about um, some of the responses uh, internationally, because I know the world premiere was at the Busan, Busan International yeah. Film Festival. And I think you had some special guests uh, from Japan there. Could you talk a little bit about the response, both from local um, South Korean people, as well as the interaction with the uh, fishermen? Um, I think South Korea, especially Busan, is very close to former uh, whaling hub. And um, also South Korea, you know, has an experience being um, international criticism of their eating, you know, dog meat. So I think the audience was pretty sympathetic to um, Taiji whalers and the town of Taiji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But here, this part of the world is very difficult. I think people are still... Um, especially fe festival programmers, except you, <laughs> very uh, sort of preconceived idea about the dolphin issues, dolphin and whale issues. And um, also this is a little bit challenging to the co-filmmakers. So it's very political and sensitive. So festivals really reluctant to take this movie. Well, we're, we're happy to, to have it here. Thank you, I'm um. very, very grateful. <laughs> So, we have um, two microphones on either side uh, of the audience. Uh, if we could have uh, some questions. I see one up in the back corner. Hi. Um, it, was, it was difficult for me to watch this. Uh, I'm an animal rights activist, so I probably um, normally would have been on the side of the activists. I do think that um, you, sh you showed that some of them were very hypocritical, and I actually appreciate that. And I think that it will show um, the animal rights activist community what they need to work on. Um, I think that you also showed hypocrisy um, from the other side as well. I don't know if you intended to do that, but um, I gleaned some of that from them, as well as from Jay, who claimed to be neutral, and he actually wasn't neutral, and I get it. Um, but I know that you purposely did not want to include um, any graphic footage because that was already included in past documentaries and other other um, other sources. Um, and in doing that, the the voice of the animals kind of gets lost. And I know why you did it, though. So this is really not a critique of that. But my question to you is, uh, because being there and for so many years and filming this. Clearly, you must have seen something, you know, you must have seen some graphic things. Did that affect you or your crew on any personal level, um, separate from what you were trying to present? Um, thank you so much for your comment. I really appreciate it. Um, Cheryl, I've been emotionally, like, swinging always, you know. I mean, you know, just seeing the dolphins in the small water tank, um, it just broke my heart at the beginning. And the slaughter scenes, they did not allow me to even watch it. I negotiated it. I told them I don't need to film it, but I 
really wanted to see it, what it's like. Otherwise, I don't think, I don't feel like, you know, my experience is completed. But they really fought hard not to show it. And um, for me to get on their boat, hunting boat, it was, it, it was a lot of work. A lot of drinking and a lot of <laughs> eating dolphin sashimi and like, you know, so, uh, and I, I wish I could do that. And that might be different, but I have seen the graphics surely on the video. And it's really, it's really gruesome. Yeah. Thanks for your question. Do um, you have any more hands? I see a hand over here. Um, hi there. I really enjoyed your film. Hi, thank um, you. There might be a lot of good that's come, that comes out of both the film and the, um, the work of the activists. Um, the mayor of Taji did say that he would like to transform uh, the town mm -hmm. into a global uh, whaling research town. I would love to see a follow-up film on your part um, when he does that, and then uh, the focus on the how Taji has become now a global research for, uh, town in, on, in Welling, and um, any possibility that you may do a follow-up uh, film on that, on the research aspect of uh, uh, Taji. I spent on this film, I think, almost seven years, and I'm kind of done with it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And actually, um, my book is coming out. It's only in Japanese at this point, but um, the book in Jap Japanese book explains a lot about background and more sort of like information to support the information on um, this film. And I think my publisher is considering to publish it in English, and I hope it will help you to understand. And it has more details about the uh, future plans. Uh, I see another hand over here. Hi. Um, Hi. I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're sort of done with it because when I was watching the film, um, I was thinking very much that um, this perspective would be great if you were to do a documentary on coal miners here in the US um, because it's another beleaguered community which um, you know really is ignored and I think the most people have no con you know conception of what it's like to be a coal miner. Um, and I think, you know, it's important for people who may be an environmentalist to understand that these people do have lives and they have traditions that go on for hundreds of years in some cases and that it's really important to understand where they're coming from because when I heard those whalers talk about how their fathers, their grandfathers, this is something that they've been doing throughout generations and they can't conceive of another life. It's the same thing for coal miners, for God's sakes. You know? So you know, maybe if you're looking for a project idea, I think you, you would bring a really <laughs> wonderful perspective. So. Okay, I will Taking sit with that idea, yes. Sleep with that okay. idea tonight and let you know. Uh, uh, do we, think we have time for a few more questions. Uh, I see a hand right over here. Thank you, thank you for your movie and thank you for allowing us to speak with you. Thank um, you. What I would have liked to have seen was more of the science. So this was a very emotional film, and I can see that it was a passion project for you. Um, there's another side of this, you know, echoing the other person who spoke about the dolphins. There's a lot we know now about the science of dolphins, that they reason, that they mourn, that they live in complex societies. And um, it would have been nice to see that side of it. The drives are very gruesome. They go on for hours. Babies are slaughtered or they're driven back out to sea without their mothers. Um, if you watch a drive, ignoring all of the comments, which I realize can be, can be difficult, and I appreciate that you showed that side of it, but if the folks here would watch that, you'd see how horrible it is. So I'm asking, why did you leave the science out of the picture? Because right? we know so much now about them. First of all, there are so many um, programs and films talks about that. And I didn't really think we need to include in my film. And also emotion, you talk about the emotion and this animal rights and environmental movement or many other things. I think it's about emotions, how to affect human emotions to mobilize people, 
to be aware of the issues. It's very important. And um, so I think I, I really wanted to focus on the emotional side of this whole issue. That's why. And I had everything, like, you know, I used to have an IWC, International Whaling Commission, and bigger picture of the whaling matter, and, but it, it was just so difficult. We, it took us almost two years back and forth, putting in and putting, taking out and all these elements. But um, yeah, science is definitely, was not a focus on this film at all. And um, the reason is that um, we wanted people to focus on the different view towards the animals and nature, the relationship. Because in the Western culture, it's based on uh, Christian Judaism plus uh, Greek philosophy. You know, the humans are at the top of the uh, you know universe, and it started that way. And then all the animals and nature can be utilized for the humans. And uh, but on the other hand, Japanese think the nature in a very different way. And um, Humans are just a part of uh, nature and no different, no better than any other animals. That's their idea. So that's a crash of these two different idea and relationship between the humans and animals. And the Japanese have a very skeptical idea why, you know, Americans and Europeans give such a special attention to dolphins and whales just because they're smart. And because they think that all the animals should be equal. Even like insects or even rocks or mountains, they all should be equal part of the nature. So it's not like which is good or bad, but I just wanted to emphasize a different idea towards the nature in the two different cultures. Uh, we have more hands, uh, different uh, perspectives on the film. Let's see. Right back there. Great. Hello. Megumi, hi. It's Diana hi. Reese. We know each other. Oh, yes. Hi, Diana. Hi. How are you? I'm so glad so, you came here. Yeah. Thanks. I thank you for the film. I thought it was quite interesting. I'm, I'm a scientist, so I thought it would be good to get a scientist viewpoint about this. And I agree, with, I think that the science of it is really important. I really like the film. I thought it was really interesting. I've been involved in trying to stop the dolphin drives myself for many years as a scientist. And it's based on what we know about dolphins now. Our science changes. And what's a fact one day may not be a fact the next day. But what we know in our scientific community is that these animals also have traditions. And we have many other animals on the planet that we think um, are conscious. I study mere self-recognition in dolphins and consciousness, and we study how dolphins learn. They learn very much like young children. And I think one of the things that I think would be quite helpful is getting the scientific viewpoint into the dialogue. And it's something I really think was missing, and it's been missing in Taiji. Um, we've spoken to the Japanese government, and. The, I just want to say two things, because I think it didn't come out in the film. One of which is that the majority of marine mammal scientists, and these include people in Japan and many other countries, really want to bring an end to these drive hunts. And many of the Japanese scientists have come to American scientists and other scientists from all over the world and said, help us because we're getting beaten down by our own government. So I think that's important. Secondly, I think the Cove misrepresented some things. I think that the World Zoo and Aquarium Association that we saw represented in the film has condemned the dolphin drive hunts. It's an international group of scientists. I worked on that very hard. And we took science and applied it to ethics and policy. And they said, you cannot, you're not treating these animals ethically. And that's, the, that's not an emotional thing. It's based on science. And I think the last thing I just want to say is that when we have a certain amount of knowledge, we have a certain responsibility. So the question really becomes, once we know something, what's the ethical thing to do? And I think I say this to Americans. In our own country, we, we were killing dolphins in the tuna drive hunts. 
and scientists spoke out about it, and we brought an end to that in our own, own culture. We were whalers. We convinced Japanese people to go back and whale again, as you very well represented in the film. So I think that you know we change, and that's part of evolution and evolving, and I think that there's a great opportunity. I was very happy to hear the mayor wanted to do some really good work with research. I hope they bring it into the dry funds and really focus on whale watching and whaling, and I'd be happy to work with them on it. So thanks. Okay, I tell the mayor. Okay, I think we have time for just about one more question um, from the audience. Uh, here, here, oh, up in the front. Sometimes the back and the front don't get the uh, fair visibility they deserve. Right here. Uh, I was wondering um, if some of the participants in the film actually saw the film, and what were the reactions? Particularly, like um, the the American family, the father and the daughter, who went uh, f for three months to, uh, and, to, and they said they would come back. And her the daughter was doing her her project on that or something. You know, like some of the participants, have they seen this? Uh, and what were their thoughts about it? Um, and since everyone else made a comment. Um, as a social scientist, um, we understand this is more than just about the, the pure uh, biological science. This is about the, the, um, the uh, human-animal relations, which is a very hotly debated uh, to topic now in the social and humanistic sciences, about humans and their relationship with, with, with other animals and, um, and how um, animals proceed. I remember a long time ago um, when I was a student, there was a, uh, um, we did a little bit about dog eating in China. Um, and which is actually uh, very a very rare practice, um, but um, the, uh, the you know the, the, it was emphasized that the, the dog uh, in China, uh, versus the dog in the West, is perceived as a different kind of animal. You know, we we, the, we talked about um, whether uh, like are they considered a food source animal or a pet animal or a companion animal or something like that. It all depends on the human animal relationship and whether you, you know. Um, there's this quote, I can't remember where it's from, but it, but it's a, you know, they used to say that I, we thought was very funny that it's good to kill people, but it's bad to eat them, um, you know, uh, about in societies. <laughs> you know, it all depends on your relationship with them. But, but I, like I said, my question is about the reaction to some of the participants, like the Americans uh, who participated uh, in the film. What's the reaction to this film? Yeah, the, the, from you interviewed like uh, the American family, and also you even had uh, some comments from um, the person from she she uh, Sea Shepherd. Um, I, I would like to know what his reaction was to the film. Oh, to this film, I'm just about to hear from him, Scott and Elora. <laughs> I'm very anxious to, yeah, know about that. But I'm just, you know, I just wanted to make sure that um, w what I tried you know, very hard in this film is not to make anybody look bad. You know, um, I, that's what I paid most attention to. And Scott and Laura, I visited their home and, you know, uh, we went out to eat and we had a pretty good relationship. You know, I like them a lot also. So we just have a different opinions, but it doesn't mean we cannot be friends. I don't think, I really hope that uh, Scott and Laura like uh, this film, so, so, yeah. Okay, well I think this conversation could go on for a lot longer, but uh, we have another film coming up, so please join me in giving a final round of applause to our filmmaker. Thank you. Thank you so much.